fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're here in the Dominican Republic, the beautiful Dominican Republic, with great beaches, great people, great food, all kinds of fun things. We're actually staying in an all-inclusive resort, and I've been to quite a few all-inclusive resorts over the years in Spain, and North Cyprus, Jamaica, Aruba, here in the Dominican Republic, Mexico, a lot of them out there. And I've seen some kind of common mistakes that first-time travelers to an all-inclusive resort, and sometimes second or third-time travelers all-inclusive resorts actually make. And so we want to go through those mistakes so you don't make them so you can enjoy your all-inclusive resort vacation a bit more. And the one mistake I see a lot of first-time travelers make when they do go to an all-inclusive resort is thinking that everything is all included in an all-inclusive resort. And that's why you have to understand the all-inclusive nature of an all-inclusive resort deals with the level of accommodation and package you bought at that all-inclusive resort. So for example, we're at here, yes, we get to use the pool and the beaches, we get to go eat some of the great food, but some of the restaurants you have to pay additional for. I want to take Liam to the slides. Well, the slides, you have to pay extra for that. That's only for the ultimate pass, you know, pass holders. So you do need to be ready for that because it's not all included. And that's why sometimes you'll see they'll give you a kind of a, an offering of how all inclusive you want it to be. Because sometimes it just means, oh, you get more fancy alcohol or you get fancier meals or you get a little bit nicer excursions options maybe. So something to kind of think about when you're doing your research, when you're coming and just realizing it's not all included. People think that if they go to an all-inclusive resort in a country, they're gonna get really authentic local food and get some really authentic local culture. And I'll be honest, all-inclusive resorts are huge resorts that are geared towards kind of cafeteria-style food and cafeteria-style entertainment. How many people can we serve at one time? And therefore, a lot of times, the local culture kind of gets lost. The local cuisine kind of gets lost because what you'll see is there'll be an Italian restaurant and a steak restaurant and a Spanish restaurant, which can be really good, but I'm here in the Dominican Republic. I want, I want, I want tres golpes. I want, I want bandera. I want, I, you know, I want this food that's from here. And that's where you can really miss out on these things. That's why, look and see when you check and ask them, hey, which restaurant has more local food? Because sometimes there'll be a restaurant that's specifically for that. Here, there's one that has a D Dominican, actually, like, buffet. So, hey, I get to have the chivo, the goat. I get to have the stewed beans and rice. I get to have those things, but I had to ask, okay? I know other places, sometimes there's not one that's dedicated to local cuisine. For example, in Cancun, when I've gone, it's basically a big international buffet, and I actually talk to the employees in the thing, I'm like, hey, what's actually from here? They're like, oh, oh, you want to go over there, man. That's like the hidden pork taco place over there. That, that's where you want to go. Oh, okay. And so you want to do that because honestly, all-inclusive resorts aren't good for really like local food or local culture. So just be aware of that. And, and another thing that might frustrate you, and it kind of relates to the first two questions, is really thinking that the hotel and the resort is really gonna kind of share everything with you. Cause that's one thing I've seen in all inclusive resorts. It's more, you're checked in, okay, go have a good time. Not, oh, you're checked in, okay, well, here's your room. Here's where the all day breakfast is. Here's where the bar is. Here's where you can sign up. I, I, I noticed that they don't actually always give you a lot of information. I mean, I don't know why. Maybe so you don't do as much stuff or maybe they just are trying to get a lot of people going through. But that's one thing you have to think about is maybe they're not gonna share everything with you. So that's why it's important when you check in, make sure you're asking questions. Okay, do you have a map of the property? Um, where's the good beach? Where, where do I get my towels? Where, where, if I have issues, what's the number I call for room service in case I can't make it to the, the dinner or something like that? Ask those questions, because they'll share them fine, but it's almost like they almost hold it back a little bit, so do be aware of that. That's why you'll see people that come back to All Inclusives, the same one, again and again and again, because they figured out the system and they know how to do it. So learn those tricks of the system early to make your all-inclusive a better experience. And that includes making reservations for dinner, which you have to understand, some of these all-inclusives, there are gonna be nicer restaurants that are requiring reservations and also might require a dress code and like a nice college shirt or something. But honestly, figure out the restaurants you wanna to go to and make your dinner reservations. Some places they say, oh, you can only make the reservations when you're on property. Other ones, if you're like a premium member or an ultimate stay member, they might let you book a month in advance because some of the places actually have really good restaurants. So it's something to kind of think about so you're not just having the cafeteria dinner, which is the same place you have the cafeteria lunch, which is the same place you have the cafeteria breakfast, okay? So make sure you make those reservations. And honestly, when you check in, do it there. If they, oh, we don't do that, you ask 
ask them, hey, where's, then where do I do that? Where do I sign up for that? And then go to that desk right away before you go to your room and sign up for those dinner reservations. Now, another thing that I've learned over the years and what other travelers sometimes don't realize is even you're going to one destination and there's a lot of all-inclusives that are there, don't think all the all-inclusive resorts are the same. You really need to do your research to see which one's gonna be right for you. So I'm here with my family. So I wanna to go to a family-themed one. So here, they've got pools, they've got beaches, they've got excursions. Heck, I can take a Spanish class with my kid. There's all kinds of stuff for the family. But then sometimes you go to resorts which are more adult focus let's say and that's going to be something different so you want to kind of think about what i want to get out of that vacation okay when you're going to go there because honestly doing your research on the inclusives will definitely pay off on a better family experience or couples experience a romantic interlude experience i mean there's a lot of different um all inclusives out there just let me put it that way Hey, one thing I gotta tell you is no matter where you are and which all-inclusive you go to, this thing on my wrist, your wristband, you don't lose that, okay? That's one of those things people think, oh, it's a little tight, I'll take it off at night, no one will notice. You tend to lose these things, okay, if you take it off. Never take it off, because if you do lose this, you usually have to pay to replace it, okay? And for example, where I'm staying here in Dominican Republic, replacing this is $50. Where we were in Mexico, it was $75. Where we were in Jamaica, it was $120. Why? Because this gets me all the free food and drink I want at all the restaurants around here. And that means someone else can get that. So you get fined for that. And if you have little kids, I'm gonna tell you, your little kids are gonna say, oh, can I take this off, mom? Can I take this off, dad? Tell them no, because if they lose it, that can be one that gets charged as well. So make sure you do not lose this because you will pay and they do not care how it got lost. Now, another mistake I see tourists make when they come to all-inclusive resorts is they forget their beach accoutrement. Look, most all-inclusive resorts are going to be at fun places like the Dominican Republic with great beaches or Cancun with fun beaches or Jamaica with fun times and you're at the beach. But people sometimes don't bring their beach stuff with them or they forget and they think, oh, I'll just get it at the resorts because honestly, you don't have to worry. Most of these resorts will have stuff for you to buy. But if you're going to be getting that sunblock or your sandals or whatever, the prices are significantly higher than back home. So for example, sunblock here where we were, $32. That same $32 sunblock at Walgreens back home, $12.50. Okay, so you're looking at significant price rises. So make sure you have the sunblock. Bug spray is another one a lot of people forget. Sandals, if you're gonna be going to Jamaica and do some of the waterfalls kind of stuff, or here in Dominican Republic, go to the 27 waterfalls and hike around there, Bring your water shoes, because that's one where the prices really get high, are the water shoes, okay? So have those stuff with you. If you're gonna come with your kids, bring a few beach toys with you, because you really wanna spend another 20 bucks on some plastic toys that you get for $3 at the dollar store. And, and things you should definitely throw in your bag when you're packing here is, honestly, people that come to an all-inclusive and don't bring like a nice outfit, whether it's a dress to go to dinner with or a collared shirt and a pair of slacks. I know, it sounds crazy. I'm in the Dominican Republic where it's sunny and beautiful and I have to wear a pair of slacks. Yes, and closed toe shoes, because some of those restaurants do have dress codes you have to be in. And I'll be honest with you, you can't just flash the money to get in. They'll be like, nope, sorry, that's our rules. So make sure you do bring that outfit, and that also is for little kids. So make sure Junior has his polo shirt, and Juniorette has her nice little sundress, so you can go and have a nice family dinner together. Now, I know I've been talking about family and, and having a good time when you're here as a couple, but I think another mistake people make is they think, oh, I'll, make, I'll meet friends when I'm here in, in Punta Cana, and I'll bring them to the resort, or, oh, my buddy's in Cancun too, we'll just come hang out at, at our resort for a little while. That's one thing that's a mistake, because don't think that your resort's gonna let you have friends come for free. They'll probably let you have a friend come by, but you're gonna have to do like a day pass for them, so you could be spending another $100, $150 on that friend, so you might wanna think about that, and they also have time limits for it. So if you wanna meet friends when you are staying at all-inclusives, it might be better to go into town and meet them there instead of have to spend a hundred and some odd dollars to be able to hang out with your friend. So when I came down to film this, I asked Liam, Liam, what's a mistake that people make at all inclusives I should make sure I mention? And Liam literally said this. He said, look, he said, dad, tipping. People forget to tip. And that's true. Don't make the mistake of thinking, oh, it's all inclusive. So the tips are included as well. They're not, okay? So make sure you're bringing a lot of singles, $5 bills, because honestly, in the Caribbean, if you're looking at those all-inclusive all resorts, the dollar is always a fine currency to have to tip with. And so you have those singles for a drink here, a little help there, because honestly, your tips make a huge difference in people's lives that are here, but also it's just a nice thing to do. So uh, yeah, bring a lot of singles. I mean, a lot. Like, uh, we're here for a long weekend. 
I'm, I've got 50 singles and I've already gone through them, okay? Because she's like, here, thanks, thanks. It's one of those things, okay? So don't forget to tip and don't forget to bring some small bills to do that tipping. Now, one of the things I've always enjoyed going to all-inclusive resorts is actually talking to the people that work there, whether it's the lifeguard or a bartender or a guide, other people. And, and one of the things I think is really important is, is really, don't forget to actually learn a few words before you come to your all-inclusive resorts. Because if you're coming to the Dominican Republic, know a little bit of Spanish, it'll go a long way. Because a lot of the tourists that come here literally won't speak any Spanish at all, and they just start speaking English. So, and, and honestly, if you're at all-inclusive, they'll speak English in the local language, no problem. But it's one of those things, whenever I've started to speak Spanish with people, they're like, oh, hey, and they like perk up. And every day, all the people I've spoken to in Spanish while I've been here, Mark, how are you? Come sit over here with us. Hey, you know, they're like, hey, come get a drink. Here you go, yes, his is done. Struck. I don't know why. I mean, it's one of those things by just knowing a few of those words, even if it's just like gracias, which is thank you, and por favor, which is please in Spanish, those kind of things go a long way to ingratiate yourself with the people working here. So learn a few of those words because it does help. Because you're going to need some of those help sometimes. Because my next mistake I see tourists make when they come to all inclusive resorts is thinking they'll be able to get a beach chair anytime they want. Look, I was out filming this morning at 7 30 in the morning and i'm not joking all of the beach chairs that were around the pool were already like reserved with a pillow or a towel or a book or a shoe people already took them like oh wow there's nothing here we actually ended up out on the beach to get our spots because there was nothing available so don't think you're gonna be able to get a seat at two in the afternoon when you head down there to chill out for the afternoon you might be like well i guess we're just gonna pile our stuff here in the corner and not have a place to sit because that does happen so make sure you're planning your seating chart let's say the night before to figure out when you're gonna put your stuff out there how you're gonna get your seat because that could be something there and that's actually one thing I've actually seen people get into fights about at all-inclusive resorts is about seating because people will put their stuff out at 6 30 in the morning and then they don't come until 2 in the afternoon and people are like what the hell so you might see some resorts actually start taking people's stuff off of the chairs and letting the chairs be open so do be aware of that okay because i'll tell you right now if you think your fist cuffs are okay they will kick your butt out of the all-inclusive and you don't want that to happen now a more fun kind of mistake i want to mention is um when people don't bring like a reusable water bottle or a big bottle or a big glass when they come to an all-inclusive resort because you think all-inclusive yeah i can get all the drinks i want all the all the good times i want it's fine but the thing is they're going to give you a beer this size a mojito this size um a mama juana which is going to be about this much which is actually all you need that's the local liquor here Woo! it'll get you but then you're like wait i have to keep going back 10 times to of like one beer so if you have your big yeti or your big water bottle or reusable bottle they could fill that up for you so you're not going back again and again so just throw that in your carry-on or throw that in your check luggage you know on your way out because honestly you will use it now another mistake i see people make when they go to all inclusive is they don't get off the resort i mean you don't have to get off the resort but honestly you really miss out if you don't do some of the excursions because that's how you might actually learn more about the culture than you will at an all-inclusive resort so maybe it is going to like here uh sona island you can go out there and see the beaches there or maybe you're going to go whale watching or maybe you take a food class i mean i know when we were in costa rica at one we actually did a bunch of food classes which helped the boys understand costa rican culture better we're like hey pura vida right and so you do that it gives you a chance to really see more and and as much fun as it is just chill out at the beach for a week sometimes you want to kind of break it up by doing those excursions so don't miss out and another mistake i think tourists make is they think the prices for the excursions are set in stone look those excursions one a lot of people are offering that same excursion all throughout the city or town you're staying in and they all kind of end up being the exact same excursion where you all end up at the same bus station get put on a big bus to do the exact same thing regardless where you're going to be but also remember you can negotiate some of those prices we were on a tour yesterday and basically the prices we learned range from 110 dollars to 60 dollars what people paid and we were all in the same boats so uh, think about that now one thing I think is important in terms of safety when you're looking at all-inclusive resorts is, is really people think to seem to assume that, oh, it's an all-inclusive resort, I'll be fine, I don't have to worry about anything, I can leave anything out in my room. And, and for a lot of all-inclusive resorts, that actually is okay, but I'll be honest with you, don't leave out cash, jewelry, bling, any of those things. You want to use the safe when you're there. And I'm not saying it's the workers and stuff like that. There's just other people that might be passing by and you do need to be careful with that. So 
don't just blindly assume it's super safe and there's not gonna be issues. You still wanna be your usual smartness. Like you don't leave your medicine out at the Holiday Inn, you know, when you're back home, you wouldn't do that here either. And speaking of the Holiday Inn aspect, I think there's another thing that people make a mistake on because when you stay at a hotel around the world, a lot of times you don't even have to check out. They've got my credit card, they'll send me the bill, it's already paid, whatever, I just leave. All inclusive resorts, you need to know that the check in and check out processes may be different. And so it may be to check out at all inclusive, you literally have to physically go to the desk and check out in case you have to pay for some of those extras that weren't included in the all inclusive. So that might be something you have factor your time in, okay? And that's why I think it's really important that if you're gonna be coming to an all inclusive, I, I gotta tell you, ask questions ask questions all the time because like I said before, sometimes it doesn't feel like they're sharing, but you can ask at check-in or at the help desk. You wanna to talk to people. You wanna ask them, where's the good restaurant? Where should I be eating? Uh, where can I take the kids? Is there is there a kid disco? Because sometimes you might see that there's actually multiple like pools you could go to and you're like, hey, where's the adult pool? Or where's the little baby pool? And they'll help you out. And some people are just kind of scared to ask because they think, well, I don't speak Spanish, so I don't wanna ask them. Look, it's an all-inclusive. They'll, they'll, they'll speak English at that help disk too, okay? So don't worry. Because that leads into another mistake that people make when they go to all-inclusives. By not having all that information out there, you don't actually know everything that's available and, and you really might not take advantage of all the cool free stuff that's actually included in your package. There might be, oh, you actually get one spa visit included in your thing. One we were at, they had one day at the fancy water park thing you could go to for free, and then you had to pay for the other days. But that's just it, you gotta ask, you gotta talk to make sure you find out about all those, you know, freebies that are included that you didn't know about to really get the most out of your experience. And that goes back again into why people come back to the same ones again and again and again, because they know the system. And speaking of the system, I gotta warn you about this one. I've, I've made this mistake myself, and that is when you go into those buffets, not knowing the system of how the food is. Like, where is the good food? Where is the bad food? Where is the local food? But also, not knowing that the food never ends. Because honestly, eating too much is a mistake that people make, especially that first day or two you're there, because you're thinking, I wanna have everything, I wanna have everything, get pile plates high. Look, take a plate, take a few things, then go back for another plate later, it's fine. That's why it's all you can eat, but Honestly, sometimes people overeat so much they just feel miserable for the first couple days and they don't get to enjoy this kind of thing. So take your time, learn the system. Ah, the roast beef guy's over there, but he's only there for a few hours. So I gotta make sure I come at those times to get the roast beef instead of only getting like the burnt hamburgers, which sometimes happen. Hey, one of the best parts of all inclusive resorts is when you come in here, you're with a lot of people that will just relax and enjoy their time on vacation. And that makes it really easy to make friends when you're at an all-inclusive. We've made some wonderful people. Jose Luis from Spain was a super dude we met on the beach. We've got Manny and Teresa we met from New Jersey. We've been hanging out with and getting to talk to them and sharing travel stories. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. And and because you're here and, and you, I mean, as much as you want to have your romantic weekend or your family week or whatever, sometimes it's good to have somebody to, you know, have a beer with or have a chat with. And you actually do make friends on these all-inclusives because a week at one spot, you're going to see people again and again and again. And you're going to be on the same excursion and doing the same thing. So take that time to make a new travel buddy. And then there's one mistake I don't want you to make, I wanna make sure you don't make when you're looking at all-inclusive resorts, and that is not planning out and scheduling your transportation from the airport to the resort and also from the resort to the airport. Because a lot of all-inclusive resorts will have a shuttle service or a bus service that will take you, which is cool, but I found that communication isn't always the best with all-inclusive, so to figure out where you gotta go, how it's gonna be. So call and make sure you know exactly how that transportation is, or call and arrange your own transportation so you have private transport instead of the bus, because then you know someone's gonna be waiting for you with a sign that says, Walter's family, come here, which has made our life a lot easier, especially if you're going to places like Cancun, where you have to go through the gauntlet of all the timeshare people, and, and the same thing can happen in the Dominican Republic as well. You're like, oh my God, can I just get to my ride? That can be quite something. And also, it can take kind of a headache out of trying to figure out where we're gonna go so you're much more relaxed when you hit the check-in to start enjoying your all-inclusive. So, what are some mistakes you've seen people make when they've gone on inclusives? Please put it in the comments section below and I'll say bye from here in the Dominican Republic.